Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for June the 17th of 2021. Well, it is titled NGC 6888, the Crescent Nebula. So what do we see here? Well, this is what is known as the Crescent Nebula, also known by the catalog designation of NGC 6888. And this is an example of material around a star. Now nebulae form for a number of reasons. We see nebulae around forming stars. We see a nebula around dying stars as well. In this case, it's a young star and in fact a very hot star. The central star in this nebula is known as a wolf Rayet star. And that is a very massive star which is becomes unstable and expels some of its outer layers. So a normal star like our sun is relatively stable and while it does send material out in the form of a solar wind, it does not lose this fraction of its material. So here lots of material gets expelled out. Of course, this star also has a lot more material to move being many times the mass of our sun. And in fact, it's considered that it's losing about and it's a solar mass about the mass of the sun every 10,000 years. So the reason it can do that is it also does not live for a very long time. So this is a star that is close to the end of its life and will likely become a supernova at some point in the future. Now the question is how soon will it become a supernova? Will this happen next week, next month, or in a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand years? And the problem is we don't know. There's no way to judge just by looking at the star telling exactly what stage it is in or how close it is to becoming a supernova. We could only do that if we could look inside the star. If we could see what is going on inside, then we would be able to have a better idea. A massive star like this is producing energy through nuclear fusion, much like our sun. Our sun fuses hydrogen into helium. More massive stars after they fuse hydrogen to helium will fuse helium to carbon and then carbon to oxygen and working their way up the periodic table to iron. Once it reaches iron, it reaches an impasse. It can't go beyond iron because fusing iron atoms together takes energy instead of giving you energy. So once that happens, it is no longer possible to gain any energy and the star will become unstable, collapse downward, imploding, uh, likely leaving behind either a neutron star or a black hole at the center and then rebounding outward, forming a new type of nebula that we call a supernova remnant which would then expand out into space. But knowing exactly when this is what happened is not something that we know. And in fact, since the invention of the telescope, there has not been a supernova within our galaxy that we've been able to detect. And that has been for over 400 years ago now. The closest supernova occurred in 1987 in a small satellite galaxy of our Milky Way known as the Large Magellanic Cloud. Now that does not mean there have been no supernovae within our galaxy, just none that we could see. There's a large portions of our galaxy that are completely invisible to us because we have to look through the central portions. And there is so much dust there that we su simply cannot see even a massive supernova explosion going on on the other side of our galaxy. So at some point a new supernova will occur and this is one of those possibilities but whether it will happen next month or in 10,000 years is a very good question. So that was our picture of the day for June the 17th of 2021. It was titled NGC 6888 the Crescent Nebula. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be the devil didn't do it. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.